With all the news from WTCN-TV's expanded news-gathering facility. WTCN-TV, Channel 11. This is Channel 11 News at 10. Twin Cities homeowners should brace themselves for a price hike in fuel. The Minneapolis fire has claimed a life, and an airline strike is on the horizon. These stories and more, along with weather and sports, coming up on News Center 11. WTCN TV, Channel 11. This is News Center 11 with Jim Dyer, Bob Kurtz Sports, and Glenn Burns Weather. Now, here's Jim Dyer. Good evening. Minnesotans who use fuel oil for heating will get what they need, but it's going to cost more. Jeanette Harrison has that story. Because of the international situation, oil companies have been buying on the spot market. That's from any country that will sell without a contract. That's driven up the price of fuel oil, but here in Minnesota, officials say they're glad that it looks like we'll have enough to go around. The situation seems to have bottomed out. That is, that uh, although inventories are extremely low right now, um, a number of the, uh, the major supply areas are down to about one day supply. It looks like new supply coming in should be in excess of what demand is expected to be, such that we'll be able to start building inventories again. Bud Armstrong says if there's a coal snap and the need for fuel increases, a shortage could develop. And he adds oil companies will continue to allocate fuel until shipments from Iran begin again or a substitute source is found. And that's bad news for consumers. I think uh, given the kinds of price increases in crude that we're seeing from some of the foreign suppliers, uh, that we can expect prices to continue to rise in both gasoline and fuel oil. Homeowners will be sharing their price hike with drivers. Officials say they expect the price pressure to shift to gasoline when warmer weather reduces the demand for fuel oil, and that'll mean higher prices at the pump. For WTCN Television News, I'm Jeanette Harrison. One man is dead and five others are suffering from severe effects of smoke inhalation following a morning fire that swept through a three-story apartment building near downtown Minneapolis. Fire gutted an entire section of the Layton Apartments in the 1400 block of First Avenue South. The dead man has been identified as 43-year-old Dennis Leno. Forty others, many elderly, were taken to the Hennepin County Medical Center. Most of the others since have been put up at a hotel by the Red Cross. The fire broke out in the basement and quickly spread throughout the building. The cause of the blaze still has not been determined. Northwest Orient flight attendants have rejected their airline's latest contract offer and voted to strike if necessary. Jane Mitchell has the story. A lot of Northwest Orient flight attendants is gaining momentum and could soon take off in the form of a stewardess strike. The main issue is better pay. Union officials say in 1978, 99% of all Northwest flight attendants grossed $10,000 or less. They're asking for a 33% pay hike and say a strike is a strong possibility if they don't get it. Um, we are so below industry standards for our wages and our regulations that I think we really are ready to, you know, tell Northwest that, you know, we're not happy with what, we're, what we have right now and we'd like change. Meanwhile, there's debate over whether Northwest pilots will honor an attendance strike. If they do, it could cripple air travel to and from the Twin Cities. Half of it is on Northwest. Right now, everything is still up in the air. But stewardesses say that could soon change if something isn't worked out with Northwest Orient. They say airline officials just might have to return to their seats and prepare for landing. Jane Mitchell, WTCN News. Beginning tomorrow, Minnesota begins no-fault divorce. We'll have that story and more when News Center 11 continues.
It was learned today that Dr. Basil Sklan is no longer licensed to practice medicine here in the state of Minnesota. The 56-year-old Sklan was placed on probation last year for molesting female patients at Wilmar State Hospital. Sklan surrendered his license last week to the state medical board, acknowledging that he had been convicted of criminal sexual misconduct, but continued to maintain that he is innocent. Sklan is currently practicing medicine at the Chester Mental Health Center in southern Illinois, where he is still licensed. However, the state of Illinois says they weren't aware of Sklan's conviction in until last week. Now an investigation is being conducted that could mean his license to practice in that state will also be revoked. Almost everybody is afraid of something, but some fears are a little more unusual than others. Dr. Michael Breen has this report. A phobia is an unreasonable fear. We've all heard of people who are afraid of heights or flying or enclosed spaces such as elevators. Some phobias, though, are more unusual. A uh, young woman that I dealt with that uh, had a fear of stuffed deer heads. And uh, you may not think that that would get in her way, but it certainly did. It limited her from going into restaurants, into sporting goods stores up north with her fiancé. Uh, we taught her some relaxation, and then while she was in the relaxation lab, we would have her imagine that, for instance, she was walking into a restaurant here in the cities where there were stuffed deer heads present on the walls. Other uncommon phobias are to dogs, tornadoes, and rodents. In all, the clinic has treated more than 5,000 patients, many with phobias. Fear of open spaces, a therapist wouldn't lie me down on a couch. He'd treat me right here. This is Dr. Michael Breen, WTCN News. And in the top national news today, Vietnam turned the tables on China. Vietnamese troops broke through Chinese lines in two places and are now inside China. In Peking, U.S. Treasury Secretary Blumenthal again asked Chinese leaders to pull out of Vietnam. Tanzania's invasion of Uganda is gaining ground. Ugandan resistance in the four-month-old war is said to be falling apart. Ugandan President Idi Amin has asked neighboring countries to help make a peace, but has moved his family in Libya just in case. In Washington, D.C., striking farmers get one last hurrah. They've worked out a deal to have at least one more tractor cade tomorrow and will be out of the capital by Sunday. The largest jump in 11 months was reported in the nation's balance of trade. The deficit in January was $3.1 billion. Chances of a big cut in federal income taxes were dimmed. The Senate Finance Committee voted against any such across-the-board reduction. Jane Byrne upset Chicago's Democratic machine last night. Ms. Byrne, a former daily protege, was fired by incumbent Mayor Michael Volandic, who lost the primary by a narrow margin. And in Cleveland, voters gave Mayor Dennis Kucinich a vote of confidence by approving an increase in their city income taxes and keeping the city-owned electric power plant. Well, if you're a fisherman and have been putting off until the last minute getting your dark house off the ice, well, you have only a few hours left to do so. Bernie Grace reports. Fishermen were doing chiseling today, and it wasn't to dig more holes. It was to dig out their fish houses. State law has it by midnight, all of the houses have to be off the ice. If they're not, the owners could be fined up to $500. Yes. Department of Natural Resources officials say getting the houses off the ice hasn't been easy. This year has been a very bad year for ice fishermen uh, because of a lot of snow. And when we get a lot of snow before the ice gets too thick, we get a lot of slush. And uh, with all the slush on the ice, made difficult to travel with uh, snow machines or even snowshoes. And many of the people didn't get out on the uh, lake as often as they wanted to because of the conditions and when they finally got to the lake they saw their fish houses were frozen in uh, ice over the floors and what have you. While some worked away, others without houses who may have froze all winter today could sit idly by doing what they rather do, fish. But others found the chore more than they could handle. In fact, all hands, even reporters, were put to work. If it wasn't the house falling off the sled, it was a case of going nowhere. Others who were a little more prepared had an easier time of it. However, it seemed like the lucky fishermen today weren't those who caught something, but the ones who could go home without having to worry about moving a house. On Lake Minnetonka, Bernie Grace, WTCN News. And tonight we can talk about the lucky meteorologist who is here to tell us that there may be warm weather on the horizon. Absolutely. Walked out the house today, saw something very strange. It's called a lawn, I believe. Haven't seen it for a few <laughs> months. It was green grass, and I guess spring is on the way, and I'll be back to tell you all about when it's arriving right after this. Thank you. 
Well, despite the overcast conditions today, it was a relatively warm day right here in the Twin Cities. Let's check our current weather conditions and find out how warm it actually was. Our high today was 38. Right now it's 35 degrees. We had an overnight low of 27. The humidity is at 52 percent. But the barometer falling from 29.94 inches of mercury and winds are southeasterly at 6 miles per hour. And the reason the barometer falling, we have a winter storm approaching. It's not a relatively strong one, but nevertheless it's moving to the east across the Pacific Northwest right now. It's present location over Idaho and it's continuing to move toward the east, spreading some snow showers, freezing rain and drizzle in front of it. It should be in our neck of the woods sometime by Saturday, but Saturday is going to be a really nice day because it should be about 40 degrees. Now as we check the, uh, well, let me show you what's happening with the five state area at the present time. Very strong winds up in North Dakota. That's causing blowing and drifting snow. So we have a big problem out that way. If you're headed up that way, please drive with caution. Cloudy skies over most of Wisconsin today. Down in Iowa, freezing drizzle and icy conditions on the highway. So very dangerous driving conditions down in Iowa. Cloudy skies in South Dakota today and some of the temperatures. International Falls last night with 13 degrees, ranging down to 34 degrees over in Rochester. And over in St. Cloud, they had a low last night of 36. Now, as we check the Minnesota map, we'll find out lows tonight will range between 10 and 15 degrees up north. Cloudy skies, occasional snow. Down south, we have the freezing rain and drizzle. And lows tonight in the southern areas are between 20 and 25 degrees. A look at the radar picture. Now, I've been dying to show you this. Here's the radar as it's actually happening at the present time. We can see the shower, a very light one, but nevertheless, it is still there right over the areas near St. Cloud. The shower has been stationary for the past several hours and is weak. But uh, nevertheless, we do have a light area of uh, snow flurries that continues to move uh, rather slowly, very slowly, to the northeast. Now, what we have here on our national weather map is called an occlusion. It happens when a cold front starts to overtake a warm front, and that's what's happening down over Louisiana. Consequently, today they had some very heavy thunder showers and some hail, and a, a funnel cloud was sighted around the uh, uh, areas down in southern New Orleans, but it did not cause any damage. Up north, we have a very strong wind flow coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. That's what's giving us the cloudy skies, but that's also what's giving us the warmer temperatures. And speaking of warm temperatures, here now is a look at some of the afternoon sky, reading, uh, sky conditions and temperatures around the nation today. Over in uh, Atlanta, 56 degrees and fair skies. Cleveland, 43, and they had some partly cloudy skies over there today. New York City, 51 and fair for a change. Denver, 37 degrees this morning, and they had partly cloudy skies. Out in Los Angeles, 55 on the coast and fair skies. And in Canada, Montreal, 30 in snow, and Toronto, 39 degrees and fair skies. As Bernie Grace told you before, get the ice houses off before midnight tonight. Otherwise, you're subject to a $500 fine, and all in all, the ice house could sink itself. So don't even, just take it off tonight, and you'll be in good shape. Here's a look at the forecast for the Twin Cities. We're calling for overcast skies tonight, a slight chance of some snow flurries. Lows will range between 22 and 20, er, 25 degrees. Now, for tomorrow, we'll have the same conditions, a slight chance of flurries mixed in with some freezing rain so driving should be rather hazardous. Daytime highs 33 to 38 degrees. The extended outlook calling for mostly cloudy skies on Friday and a slight chance of flurries. Saturday continued cloudy, a good chance of snow mixed in with some freezing drizzle, but Sunday variable cloudiness, warmer temperatures, a high expected to be near 40 degrees. Some changes in Minnesota's divorce law go into effect tomorrow. Legal experts say the changes will take some of the hostility out of divorce proceedings in this state. Sally Fitz has the report. The new law removes what may be called the finger pointing from Minnesota's current divorce law. As it is now, a divorce can be granted on the basis of an irretrievable breakdown in the marriage. And the court uses several guidelines in determining that breakdown. Conduct detrimental to the marriage, habitual chemical dependency, imprisonment, mental illness, continual separation, and serious marital discord. Well, beginning tomorrow, all that is thrown out, and divorces will be granted on the basis of only two things, serious marital discord or separation for 180 days. No accusations, no blame. What else do you consider positive about the law? Well, I think the fact that we defuse the party's attitudes to some degree and make the whole process less painful to them and particularly less painful to the children. It's very, very hard on kids to have their parents fighting in a bitter divorce case. One aspect of the new law that many people will find convenient is that now they don't have to wait six months before they get remarried. Under the new law, they can get remarried immediately after the divorce. I'm Sally Fitz reporting for WTCN News. And the superstar of Star Trek, or at least one of them, opened last night at the Guthrie Theater, and Nancy Nelson was there. 
You recognize those ears, don't you? They belong to Mr. Spock from Star Trek, a character whose fame was so great that often fans couldn't separate actor Leonard Nimoy from his character. Certainly, they had no idea who I was. Um, they were affected first by the character and then discovered me afterward. And uh, I was able to see a very real transition take place in terms of public recognition. Uh, most of the time, people who saw me on the street would say, this Mr. Spock, at first. Now, I get quite the opposite. I get, that's Leonard Nimoy, he played Mr. Spock. Now Nimoy has launched into his own one-man show, Vincent, a drama about Vincent Van Gogh. He finds him fascinating. Unique, unique man. Uh, a, a, an extremely passionate, volatile, uh, bright, very bright, intelligent man, spoke uh, five languages fluently. His career has been varied. Star Trek, Mission Impossible, Equus on Broadway, and major films like The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Vincent represents a special challenge. As Nimoy puts it, it's an opportunity to do a beautiful piece of material about an extraordinary man. You won't find the Starship Enterprise or the man with the pointed ears, and no one will beam in. But here at the Guthrie, you'll meet Vincent Van Gogh through Leonard Nimoy. For WTCN-TV, this is Nancy Nelson reporting. And that's the news to this hour. Join us again tonight at 10 for a late look at the day's top developments. For Glenn Burns and Bob Kurtz, I'm Jim Dyer. We'll see you at 10.